This is not an election of hate. This is an election of poaching. So, Dr. Anand Ranganathan, what do you have to say? Election of hope or poaching? What is this election going to be all about? Uh, good evening, Navika, and good evening to all my fellow panelists. No, I think it is, uh, to be honest, to, before I come back to uh, the thrust of uh, the debate tonight, which is uh, Yogi Adityanath and Ayodhya, uh, to answer your question first, uh, it is an election uh, that is going to decide uh, based on development that has happened in the last five years. Let's be very honest, things have changed from the, the years and days of 1990s when people could be swayed by religion, alone. I'm not saying that it does not play an important factor. But the fact of the matter now is that people are very informed. Voters, they demand development. And if they're not given development, uh, then they, they simply don't vote for that party. And uh, B BJP would bear the brunt if it has not, uh, uh, you know, uh, developed Uttar Pradesh. But by all parameters, most parameters, I can say, there has been improvement in the last five years. But that is not the thrust of uh, the debate tonight. To, uh, tonight was, uh, as you said, Navika, you asked, uh, what is this symbolism of Yogi uh, possibly contesting from uh, Ayodhya? And I have to say this, that his decision, of course, it has to be finalized by BJP, but as you're saying, 95% sure. The symbolism, you are right, it cannot be missed. And it is the same reason why Modi decided to contest from Kashi in 2014. Navika, here is the report. Let me show you the report. Uh, from March 17th, 2014. And it says, and I'm quoting, Modi chose Varanasi as he is wary of losing in Vadodara. <laughs> One can only laugh at such predictions now, given what happened at Varanasi in 2014. In fact, according to uh, our mutual friend Ashutosh, Arvind Kejriwal, who abandoned Delhi incidentally to contest against Modi from Varanasi, literally cried. So the choice for Modi was more symbolic and cultural rather than political. And it is the same for Yogi Adityanath, or maybe not. Remember, Modi declared in 2014, I quote him, I have come from the land of Somnath to seek blessings in the land of Vishwanath. I suppose Yogi is going from the land of Goraknath to seek blessings in the land of Ramlalla. But there is a difference, albeit slight, just give me a minute, it's important, Navika. While Modi had never visited Varanasi with political ambitions in mind, or done anything for the city prior to 2014, Yogi has worked wonders in Ayodhya. He has been personally involved in a slew of projects to herald a new birth of Ayodhya, as he says, to make it an incredible destination, both for domestic as well as international travelers, in fact. There are some 79 massive development projects currently ongoing and being monitored by Yogi himself. These include the Maryada Purushottam Ram International Airport, the 84 Kosi Parikrama Mark, a totally revamped railway station, a 1200-acre Vedic township, Ramayan spiritual forest on the banks of Sariyu. We have already seen how Diwali is being celebrated in Ayodhya since 2017. And lastly, the Bhavya Ram Mandir, the construction of which is being closely monitored by Yogi himself. And so, this is a constituency for which Yogi has been working really hard to nurture. And therefore, it is not merely symbolic, but also a political win-win strategy. I also want, before I go to Mr. M. H. Khan, I want Dr. Anand Ranganathan, maybe, maybe I'm not understanding because uh, uh, Mr. Kamru Zaman Chaudhary has banned me from trying to see into what's going to happen and where Congress is forming the government. So I can't look into that crystal ball. Why don't you look into the crystal ball and from what you've heard from Mr. Chaudhary, what do you make of their strategy in Uttar Pradesh? No, very briefly, two points. One on Mr. Chaudhary. I, I think you completely trapped him and he's ambushed with nowhere to go because you asked him, if Congress is giving so much, empowering women so much in UP, why is it not doing the same in Punjab? Or in fact, why is it not done the same in Rajasthan or Chhattisgarh? And, and Mr. Chaudhary, to all, uh, uh, you know, for all intent and purposes, is a, is a party spokesperson, so he cannot tell you the truth. That if it is Unnao uh, and Hathras, we will react, but because it is Rajasthan, we will not react. Do political parties, do political leaders have that choice? And does that, th does that smell of, uh, uh, you know, this, this event of making women empowered? <laughs> or is that all a sham only because you're looking for a profile and an election that you want to win? The rest doesn't matter. No, Navika, this is really most unfortunate. I think, you know, the, uh, I don't know how to put it, maybe the, uh, you know, when, when are they going to wake up? The Congress state of Rajasthan is burning 
while the scions of the nero dynasty are playing fiddle are they oblivious to the fact that they are out of tune with reality india can see through their games uh, and the, the whole point of the matter is navika just you know a couple of minutes the most horrendous of crimes that we have witnessed in recent recent times have occurred in rajasthan what has the congress party most horrendous and they have been now mr chaudhary this is very unfair you know uh, navika you have to please ask him to be silent i was totally silent when he was talking what nonsense you are speaking out here mr rana navika i respected you sir you zaman chaudhary kamru zaman chaudhary they you know pick up the ncrb bureau uh, readings and you'll find the maximum number of rapes in rajasthan now i don't want to make this part about partisan politics because you know this is a heinous crime against women but it would just help I, I i don't have time 30 seconds to you anand ranganathan wouldn't it just help if somebody just woke up and use the same language that they use for rapes in other parts of the country for a state that is administered by their own government and navika i am sorry i demand a minute because i was interrupted by mr chaudhary who was clearly rattled by what i was going to say the fact of the matter is the rape incidence rate of rajasthan is three times that of up rajasthan topped the charts with a crime against dalit rate of 55.6 compared to up's 28.6 where there exist dozens of instances of blatant rajasthan police and state in action in rape cases to cite just one the recent case in july 2020 of a woman in ramgarh in alwar who was brutally raped but then jumped in a well because police refused to act her father hung from himself from a tree there was no state compensation there are hundreds of cases like this but rahul and priyanka gandhi will not highlight that total crime in rajasthan has increased by 31% compared to last year rape by 38% their minions like mr chaudhary will take the time tested excuse of more reporting of cases the same excuse that every political party in power makes